there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm gonna share a couple cards that I made for my brother-in-laws who were just having birthdays um, over the past couple months. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna have fun. I'm gonna use some stamps. I'm not gonna worry about whether they're discontinued or not. I'm just gonna have some fun. And um, also I find doing something different. Like I, I feel like I'm always making cards for women. And like when I'm making cards where I don't have a recipient in mind, I always tend to gravitate to florals and pinks. So I thought I'm gonna have fun doing something that could be for a man or a woman. So I'm using a nautical theme here and I've inked up this Hero Arts Wave stamp using, I think it's Knight of Navy or Not Quite Navy Stampin' Up! ink. It's one of those kind of tealy navy colors. They did have a lot of navies back in the day. I'm not sure what's current or not, but um, I, when something I wanted to do with this stamp here to make it bolder was I spritzed it with water. So because I don't use my Stampin' Up! pads that often, um, that also helps them kind of get a little brighter and juicier when I stamp them. Now the pity of this is that this fun, beautiful background that I'm working on is going to be almost all covered up by the time I'm done. But, um, but I thought I would show you this in the video because it was so much fun to make. And I think I might use these techniques on a canvas or our journal page or something where it'll be a little more visible, or maybe I'll just use it and that will be the card because it was so much fun. So I'm doing some direct to paper inking and that's simply when you rub the ink pad on the card. Now I was extremely lucky that I did not get any ink on the inside of this card, especially with the way I operate. But um, you could tear off a scrap of paper, stick it in the card, and that will protect the inside a little bit better. So there's a little tip for you. Now I have this big old text. This is like from the mid to late 90s from a company called Stamp Francisco. I had some really great stamps. This is massive block stamp that I reach for quite a bit. So what I'm trying to get across here is, is if you like it, keep using it, save it. Nobody should, you shouldn't worry about something being in style, out of style. If you like it, use it. I stamped it a few times to cover up the background. Now, a lot of it just kind of fades away um, because it's kind of, um, because it's such a fine script, but I like it because you can add it to every layer in a really soft uh, pattern and it just really makes everything harmonize. So now I'm using this really big corner stamp. Now this is from Tattered Angels. Again, I'm sorry, it's an older one, but I use this all the time. This is a, it had a corner and like a, just a general swirl, but I love how it looks vintage. It doesn't look dated. Like I, I uh, decided to pass on a bunch of my swirl stamps that I loved and used a lot, but they just looked a little dated to me and I was kind of sick of them. For whatever reason, I don't get sick of this stamp. I use it on furniture. I use it on everything. And um, I stamped over it. With, I stamped that with some black soot distress oxide. The distress oxides give you this um, really almost like, well, it's distressed, oxidized, yeah, the texture, Fig go figure, that's why they named them that. Um, and I, I just really like it. And I'm adding a little bit of shimmer spray over top. This is a Nouveau shimmer spray. And I'm trying not to wreck this beautiful Arteza gray mat that I have, that I just got for the, to protect my work surface. Actually, it's not to protect it, it's to give me a nice, um, kind of neutral background for videoing because um, it's easy for the camera to white balance when you have that gray, middle gray everywhere. Uh, so I'm trying to keep it clean because my table, I just repainted it in like a ton of like Monet spatter um, paint colors and it looks great, but I think it would be a little distracting on some videos. So so there you go. That's why I have that back there. So now I'm going on to the focal point layer of this card and I decided to use a seashell stamp that I've never used before. It's a set from Stampin' Up! and it's a layering set and I've never used it and I have to say that I was a little disappointed because it turns out some of the stamps had kind of like a dip in them and they didn't stamp very well. Um, I usually don't have a problem with clear stamps on a like pad of paper. Like this is just like one of those um, thick um, legal pads, like small legal pads. And I usually get really good results with clear stamps on these, but, and I mean, this one was all right. Any, any problem with that was my own layering. Cause you can see my head in the way I was trying to keep my head out of the way, but you can see how like that, the ink skipped on that. And I was like, what's going on? Um, but you know, I think that when you layer everything up, it turns out fine. It looks almost like vintage fabric, how, you know, sometimes it's printed and it's not perfectly lined up. And I thought that was kind of distressed and cool looking and went with the background and the other layers I was going to use. So although I was bummed out that I didn't line that up very well and that was all on me, I decided to ultimately uh, just keep it and go with the flow. Now here I am, you know, <laughs> really, really pushing that stamp to get that in there. And then I finally went and got a, uh, a foam pad to stamp on because I was having some trouble. And with this layer, I actually, this layer did not stamp like it was supposed to. You could see that middle part didn't stamp at all. It looked fine. So I just left it. I didn't try to reline it. I figured it, I better shot, better shot just leaving it like that. 
Um, and But I did have fun playing with colors that I don't usually use, like navy and purple together and coral and tan together. Uh, and I, I like the way it came out because I'm the type of person that will just make it work. You know, I've already cut all my layers. Um, I'm going to be adding other media to it. If, you, if you're not keeping a pristine white background and you're going to do other techniques, it doesn't need to be perfect. Nobody's going to notice that something is slightly misaligned and it's definitely going to look like you made it. Actually, I made one of the cards I made, the one I'm going to show you after this, um, my husband goes, oh, did you stamp that? Or is that paper that was already printed? So it's like, I would rather have it a little sloppy and look homemade than for them to question whether I stamped it, whether it was hand done or just a piece of pattern paper. Come on. Yeah, of course I stamped it. That sucker took me like half an hour. <laughs> just to stamp it, not even to put my cards together. Jeez, Louise, you know, so, so I go for a little, uh, little imperf imperfections. So this is a technique and actually I, I have, um, Lisa over at Local King Rubber Stamps to thank for this technique. She does this all the time. And I'm like, why didn't I think of that? She'll take a really light ink and she will stamp over something that looks beautiful. And then it looks even better when you have like a really light, um, like script or something on top of it. So um, she has some great techniques on her YouTube channel. And if you ever see her in a convention, she is just so funny and awesome. And you just, she just lights up the room. You just have to have to meet her. That's Local King Rubber Stamps. If you want to look her up, she has free tutorials on our website and on YouTube. So, all right. So this is the card. I really liked how it turned out. Um, I started off by stamping this lighthouse in a gray, I believe it's gray flannel from Memento. And then I'm stamping the other layer. Now these stamps stamp perfectly. Um, no complaints here. Um, and I, I inked this one twice in ladybug and rhubarb stock so that I'd have a little extra um, shading on the shadow side. I just wanted to give it a little more dimension around the edges, like I did a little two-tone stamping there, and then stamped over the shadow part. I, it looks really nice. I did use a black marker on the stamp on the railing of the lighthouse just to give it a little um, a little more dimension, because generally the railing would be a little darker than just shadow color. And this is the sandy area. Um, this was really easy to line up. I, I think um, even, if you're, even if you're used to using a stamp positioner, I still think you could do this freehand really easily. Oh, and I wanted to mention, I used a couple shades of tan to stamp that, um, well, I just used a couple shades of tan on the same stamp and stamped it once to give me a little dimension on the sandy part. Now the water, you kind of have to build in a couple little pieces, but since it has a rough edge to it, it's really easy to just layer it up and over stamp until you filled in the area that you want. And there was a tiny little area of um, water that I appreciated for getting in the horizon line area. So I really like the stamp set. I could see this one being pulled out as one of my go-to you know, I want to stamp, I want to make something pretty and I got a birthday coming right up. This is going to be one of those go-to stamp sets. If it's still available, I don't sell Stampin' Up, but if it's still available, um, the lady that I've used is Wendy Cranford. She has a website, Love and Stampin', and you can purchase from her. She's wonderful, um, but I don't sell it myself. So I wanted to make this look like a nighttime scene because, duh, the lighthouse is shooting out light. It can't do that during the day. So I decided I would stamp the moon in a really, really pale gray. So I stamped it on a post-it note first to make a mask. Then the second generation stamp I stamped on my card so it would be lighter. It's the same gray I used for the, uh, the lighthouse, I believe. And then... Um, I cut out my two masks so that I would be able to ink over it and I would have that underneath protected. So if you're doing something small like that, try to stamp it on the sticky part of a post-it note so it will have a little bit of tack to hold it down. And I loved these, uh, this row of birds, so I wanted to stamp that. I actually stamped that over the moon, then put the mask back on because you would see the shadow or the silhouette of the, uh, the bird. Um, in front of the moon, because there's no way the birds would be far away enough to be behind the moon. Understand that? Does that make sense? I hope so. Uh, so now I'm using some navy ink, that same navy ink that I used on the background panel from Stampin' Up. I think it's Night of Navy. I'm not sure. Or not quite navy. Whatever navy you have will be just fine. And I uh, just use the same one for your inking here. And then I'm inking the background and I'm making it very modeled so it looks like there could be some fog or clouds back there. Hence the need for the light in the lighthouse. And now I'm using a real brush pen, watercolor marker, to go in and add a little shading. And I'm doing some in the water with a blue one. And I use all my brands of real brush pens together. I use my Arteza, my Ziggs, my Mozart, uh, my Uhuhu. Uhuhu. Um, <laughs> I am in a mood tonight, guys. I use them all together. They all work just fine. They're all equally as good. So buy whatever is in your budget or use whatever you have. If you have one of those, you know, you're really not going to benefit unless you need a bigger color selection. I like the color. It's too because they're refillable. So yeah, they're but they're all essentially um, the same quality, just whatever 
colors you want. Um, so now I'm looking through some of my four and a half by six and a half matte stacks. Now that size is such an awesome size for card making if you make five by seven cards because it layers perfectly. And I'm giving it a little ink on the edge and I think I'm using, um, oh, I'm using the navy. Oh, can we see? No, we can't move in it too fast. We can't see what the name of it is. This is not a sponsored video if you haven't realized it yet. And um, I also inked my panel there in that same color. So they had a little, you know, cross pollination of the colors. And oh, something you can't see that I did, that I did off camera apparently, is I um, stamped the script on that background panel right over that mat using that navy ink as well. So I gave that another layer of that pattern and, and brought it in again. Cause I really liked how it looked on top of the seashells, but I didn't want to do that over the, um, over the lighthouse cause I was really digging how much how it was looking already and I had so much going on so I didn't think that would really enhance it it probably would have looked fine it probably would have looked better but uh but I guess I you know hindsight's 50 50 I think it looks just fine like this though and now I'm just kind of you know fussing around seeing where I want to put my embellishments and I try I have so much washi tape that is a product I truly enjoy because it's so easy to use so much easier than a ribbon and I do have quite a bit of it so um I have stuck down a one that has a little red and navy because I thought it would pull the colors together and then this is a chipboard I mean a, a veneer wood veneer piece and I inked it up with that navy ink pad to make it look like a boat that's far away in silhouette so apparently a pirate ship is coming on by our little coastline so I stuck that in the back but I also let it overlap the layers which I think is a nice look so um there's that one all done now I just need to put this guy together and I don't even mind that things are a little misaligned on that since I have the inking and I have the um, overstamping. I think it works really well. Uh, and I'm, it's just a pity that I'm covering up so much of that background. I probably should have actually just cut the middle out of that card and saved it and then just backed it with something else so I could have had some of that background for something else. But I have a tendency... I use my scraps up, but if I make a bunch of backgrounds, I do have a tendency to hoard them. So I decided I'd let it go. I can always do it again. And it's fun. It's something I like to do again. So again, we are embellishing with some of the washi tape in a nautical uh, theme. And I decided to just grab any colors of nautical washi tape that went with the theme. And I have an embarrassing amount of nautical washi tape, apparently, that I had two tapes that fit perfectly with that theme and just wrap it around some of that twine again. And that is hemp twine. And the reason I like that is because you can thread it through buttons and it doesn't fray. And it's actually a jewelry making hemp twine. So if you want that, you'd want to find it in with jewelry making supplies, but it goes, so it's something you can use for both crafts if you do several crafts. And I like that. I just do not like threading needles and I love that I can slide it through a button. So um, that's really useful for me. And you could also use an ink pad to dye it because it's a natural material. So it's uh, it's just really nice. It is a little scratchy to make jewelry with though. So I rarely use it for jewelry. You can save those smaller bits if you just need to like thread some buttons. So um, you can hang on to those if you want to, but it's, it's pretty affordable and is biodegradable. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. And then I'm trying to sneak on another piece of washi tape, but I decided against it at the end. And um, I decided that I needed some sentiments on these cards since they're both going to be birthday sentiments. And this is a happy birthday that I found. You know, I didn't go through my DVD cases of Stampin' Up! Stamps because they all seem so precious. And obviously it's cold in my studio because I got my Cookie Monster bathrobe and I didn't bother to push my sleeves up when I was filming. Oh, well. Um, so anyways, this was from a really old Stampin' Up! set that... Um, that was all like sketchy uh, toys and I, I like it because it's nice for kids cards although it makes me sad because my kids are older and I don't really have the use to make little kids cards anymore because you know I used it for already for my nephew's cards and I don't really have any little children to make cards for anymore so it's a little sad but anyway that happy birthday was just the right size and so I stamped it twice on those little banner die cuts and I used them and of course I used the leftover um, uh, paper from my card bases to to make the uh, the banners. And there you have it. I had a lot of fun making these, truly. Oh my gosh, it was so fun just to use some older stuff and not worry about it and just have a ball. So if you're feeling like you're in a rut, grab some old stuff and rekindle that joy of card making. Thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. Until next time, happy crafting.